RPG Fanatics, and welcome to this week's episode of the RPG Report! We've got a lot of great stories in today's episode, so make sure you watch the whole thing. Firstly, and it breaks my heart to say this, I have to talk about a rather tragic story. And I will break character a little to report on this seriously. Justin Carmichael, better known as Jew Wario, passed away this week. His family has released a few details about the nature of his death, and out of respect for his family, I will not report on the facts surrounding his death. Instead, I will encourage everyone to do as I have done. Watch his YouTube channel videos. Justin was originally a contributor to Channel Awesome, with his show You Can Play This, that focuses on Japanese import games that don't require an English translation to play. He was extremely well-liked within the YouTube gaming community, and his episodes were in this humble sword's opinion, some of the best content on Channel Awesome. If you haven't seen his videos, please go check them out. You will not be disappointed. The next story in our lineup is about the drama unfolding between Candy Crush Saga publisher Keen and the makers of the Banner Saga. It seems Keen has trademarked the words Saga for use in any kind of video game, and has filed to block developer Stoic Studio from registering the Banner Saga as a trademark. A statement from Keen insists they do not believe the Banner Saga is trying to confuse gamers into believing they are downloading Candy Crush Saga, but does say they need to block the registration because it somehow protects their interests. What I am personally bothered by is the idea a company can register a word like Saga as a trademark at all, let alone for games. Saga has been used in game titles for many years such as the Romancing Saga line of games, including Saga Frontier. There is even a 2008 MMO, simply called Saga, that was developed by former Blizzard employees. It is absolutely ridiculous that the U.S. Patented Trademark Office would allow anyone to claim trademark on a single word that is commonly used in the gaming industry. Especially in the case of the Viking-themed Banner Saga, as the word Saga is Nordic in origin. By contrast, there is really nothing Saga-ish about the bejeweled knockoff Candy Crush. On that note, publisher Keen has been accused of ripping off many developers. Among them is Matt Cox, who is accusing Keen of copying his game Scamper Ghost as Pacavoid. Funnily enough, when Matt went public with the accusation, Keen abruptly pulled Pacavoid from their website. And what is even more interesting is that Keen, a company that is seemingly very concerned about trademark issues, decided to title their game Pack. And while we're on the subject of video games and candy, Kotaku reports that Belgium emo teens are getting high on a drug called Nintendo. The drug contains a large dose of MDMA, better known as ecstasy. It's been cataloged in a new entry from the Belgian Early Warning System on Drugs, alongside a few similar drugs named for other knockoff brands, such as Mitsubishi and Superman. I suppose the latter because it'll get you super high. This drug gives a new and different kind of meaning to the gamer's tip of, if it doesn't work, try blowing on it and then stick it back in. Now this segment is called the RPG Report, and we haven't talked about some stories specific to RPGs just yet. So before you punch your computer screen, here's a few quick stories just for you, the hardcore RPG fanatic. Last December, From Software opened a Dark Souls themed restaurant. For limited time only, From Software has converted the Oz Cafe into a tavern complete with bar wench waitresses prepared to bring you menu items lifted from the game's inventory list. The restaurant will be converted back into a boring, austrian themed cafe in April, so if you really love Dark Souls and plan to make a trip to Japan, you might want to check it out. A big story in gaming circles today is that Square Enix has re-released Final Fantasy VI for the Android. The game has been completely redrawn, and now features a touchscreen-based command menu and impressively washed-out sprites. Final Fantasy Tactics and Vagrant Story Director Yasumi Matsuno is helming a new Kickstarter project for a new tactical RPG. Called Unsun Story, the Kickstarter is currently live, so if you want a new Final Fantasy Tactics-style game without the Final Fantasy branding, this might be up your alley. Nintendo has also blocked the release of a tell-all book about the localization of Earthbound. In an interview with Polygon, Marcus Lindblom, the man responsible for the game's English localization, revealed he has written an in-depth book about the work that went into bringing Earthbound to the West. 
He was originally planning to launch a Kickstarter campaign to cover the book's publishing costs in time for the 20th anniversary of its American release, as a love letter to the fans. Sadly, the book will never see the light of day because Nintendo is legally blocking its publication. Lindblom said he had sent Nintendo a letter to inform the company about his intentions of publishing the book, as a professional courtesy. Not long after, he received a reply stating the company would prefer that he not publish the book, reminding him of a still legally binding non-disclosure agreement he had signed 20 years ago. Speaking of Nintendo the game console and not the hallucinogenic drug, ROM hackers have figured out a way to turn your Nintendo DS into a very trendy paperweight. Sean Hins reports that the manufacturer of 3DS gateway flash carts, which allow users to play ROMs on the Nintendo handheld, are being giant hypocrites. Apparently, Gateway wanted to be the only illegal ROM provider when they made the cart an implanted code that will brick a 3DS if any of their files are modified. So if you're one of the many thousands of gamers who use this device to play Mother 3, I hope that it was worth it. Our last story about the world of Nintendo is about a highly collectible title. Wired reports that a copy of the highly coveted Nintendo World Championships cartridge was for sale on eBay. The starting bid was $5,000, a bargain when you consider these can go for twice as much. Of course, copies fetching that kind of money generally haven't had their labels ripped off and the word Mario scrawled in ballpoint pen on the sad remains of said label. However, the game ultimately sold for almost 100 Gs, missing the 100,000 mark by only a few bucks. But fear not, rich middle-aged men attempting to relive their childhood through game collecting. Today, Destructoid reported the winning bidder has backed out of ponying up the fortune, so the game is going back onto eBay. Let the war of the money hoses begin anew! That's the news for this week, folks. Make sure you subscribe to be informed about new videos, and please also follow us on Facebook and Twitter where you can stay up to date on the latest happenings of the RPG Fanatic channel. Now I ask you, fellow fanatics, what game would make an excellent themed restaurant?